another time. And I'm glad that you've tuned back to Sign Language Resource Center here in Bika. And we're so glad to have you. We're so happy even to have you uh, visit back to our channel. We don't take it for granted. And we really, really thank you for finding time even to team up together with us one more time. And uh, this is a channel that uh, we discuss matters concerning the deaf people. We discuss matters concerning sign language. And that is the reason that we are here. I want to thank you because of watching the previous videos that we've done. And today, we are still going to do another video. And I remember previously, in the last video, we discussed about modes of communication used by the deaf people. And one of them that we really majored on was finger sparing. And uh, we tried to figure out how we do finger sparing. And we said finger sparing is an art where we try to form the letters of the alphabets on our hearts. And we did A, B, C, D, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, Q, R, S, T, U, V, W, X, Y, Z. And we committed ourselves to go. I do some practice on the same. And I want to believe that you've been trying to do so. And even today, I don't want to go back to that. I believe you can do your name. I believe that you can be able to do... Mm -hmm, Maybe finger spell where you are living, and it's wonderful. So today, I want to continue on the same modes of communication used by the deaf people. And uh, I want to, uh, to discuss a number of them. I believe that we'll be able to exhaust the list. And if you're not able to do so today, we still have some other time. Mm -hmm. The channel is always open, and we can always discuss it even in another time. And the first mode of communication is just what I have mentioned there before, is sign language. And since I'm in Kenya, and I, I'm talking about mostly the deaf people who are here in Kenya, I'm going to talk also of Kenya sign language, because there is a difference between the general sign language and Kenya sign language. And when we talk of sign language, the first thing I'll say is that sign language is a complex Mm -hmm, kind of language, but not that difficult that you cannot be able to do it, but it is a complex one. And we should say that sign language is that one which uses uh, both manual and non-manual signs as well as finger spelling to represent ideas and concepts. I hope you got that. That's a language that is using both manual in a manual science to represent ideas and concepts. And uh, the next one is Kenya Sign Language. The definition could be the same. That sign language, is a, uh, or Kenya Sign Language, is a language that uses both manual and non-manual signs, as well as finger sparing, to represent ideas and concepts as used by the deaf people in Kenya. And that has brought some mm -hmm, new term about the manual signs and the non-manual signs. And I think it is important for me to clarify that in sign language we have uh, those two, which we are calling the manual signs, and others which we are calling the non-manual signs. When we talk of the manual signs, these are uh, signs which are known, which are signed in a particular way we can show you how to sign them. For example, this is how we sign name, and that is a manual sign. Other times, we can sign uh, cli, like clying, that's a manual sign. We can sign joy, that's a manual sign. Manual signs are known, they are uh, taught, we can show you how to sign them. That aside, we now have the non-manual signs. When we talk of the non-manual signs, these are signs that maybe we cannot be able to teach you, but I'm going to explain, because they have to come from within you. And the non-manual signs, they include facial expressions, 
and body movement. I want to go back to the sign I have done climb, and I said the manual sign is climb. The manual sign, without incorporating the non-manual sign, may not convey the meaning accurately, or may never communicate what you intended to say. So when we talk of climb, there is the facial expression that should accompany the sign to show that this guy is really crying or mourning. If somebody is enjoying or rejoicing, then there is a way to sign that to show joy or rejoice or enjoy. Back to Clyde. Clyde, just like this, may not make any, uh, may not convey any meaning. Mm -hmm. But when I do crying, people are crying. The facial expression shows that. If, for example, the one I did, Joy, and you went to a certain place yesterday, mm -hmm, you had a happy time. And today you are telling me that, oh, yesterday, Paul, I really enjoyed. That's how we say enjoy, yes. But when you do enjoy, it does not really convey the magnitude of the joy that you had. So what happens, we use the non-manual sign, which I have said is an indicator or is an, an insistence. We are insisting on our body, on our facial expressions that we really did enjoy. And therefore, we send joy or enjoy, but I want you to sing that when I want to mean that we really enjoyed, but we enjoyed. Yeah, we enjoyed. It was enjoyable. We did it. So uh, I, th that's the difference. And I hope you get that. The manual signs and the non-manual signs. And I want to repeat this. Without the non-manual signs, the manual signs may not convey any meaning. And therefore it is very, very, very important for any sign language user to know how to do that. Accompany the manual signs with the non-manual signs. Some people, that uh, last word, sign, we will use the word marker, others will use features, others will use skills. It really doesn't matter as long as you understand what that means. So you can use, uh, also say, we use manual and non-manual features, manual and non-manual markers, manual and non-manual signs. It doesn't really matter. Even the alphabets A, B, C, D up to Z, we also refer to them as the manual alphabets. And that is all about what sign language is. The other mode of communication, because today I want to uh, speak on more of them or a number of them, is Saint English. I don't want to dwell so much on that because it, it talks about the affixes. And in Saint English, we don't sign or the affixes. Affixes are letters or part of a word towards the end of the word, like ing, or when we are talking of something happening like going, there is that go and ing. So in sign English, we don't consider ing. If we, we are talking about past tense, like uh, black, uh, blocking, the last part of the word, we don't consider that. So what happens? We work with the base word. Like you would say, mother is cooking. And when we do it in SA, it's going to appear maybe a bit funny because it's going to, uh, to, to be mother is cook. We do away with their, uh, their fixes, the ING. And uh, that one, uh, I don't need to dwell so much on it. The next one is signed exact English. When you talk of signed exact English, this is uh -huh. Like the way I've said in uh, Saint English, we ignore their fixes. 
and with sign exact English, we do finger spell the affixes. I hope you get the difference. The example I give there before I said, mother is cooking. So when we come now to sign the exact English, we are going to do mother is cook, then we finger spell the affix, which is ing. You are going to do it like this. Mother is, then we do cook, ing, which is a bit also complex. And uh, it's important to know this because of a mode of communication that the deaf use. But it is usually done in schools where the young deaf pupils need to learn English because other subjects in schools are taught using English. And though they know uh -huh, uh, a sign language, they also need to understand some uh, basic English so that they can be able to do mathematics, science, and other subjects which are taught in English in our Kenyan schools. Okay, the other mode of communication is reading and writing. That is simple. Reading and writing. Y you can write a note to somebody and then uh, they can give you a feedback. It's not that complicated. But there's something I want us to know that the English deaf people use, sometimes it may appear not like correct or correct English as we use it in the normal way. Why? As I have explained there before, sometimes you'll find them ignoring their fixes. Sometimes the order of words, and I think we'll have another lesson later, that we are going to tackle the grammar, or Kenya Sign Language grammar, it's different. The order of words, they may be arranged in a different way. But the important thing to know here is that you can write to a deaf person and they can write back to you if you don't know sign language. But it is good to know that the deaf, many deaf Kenyans, they do not understand Swahili. That may sound strange. Many deaf Kenyans are not taught Swahili unless it's what we say is a postlingual deaf kind of a guy. That there before they were hearing and later something happened, uh, either sickness or uh, infection or something, and they lost their hearing. But as long as they were born deaf, they are not taught Kiswahili in schools. And since they are not taught Kiswahili in schools, do not write to them in Kiswahili. Mm -hmm. Don't write a note to a deaf person in Kiswahili. Uh, write in English. When they respond back to you, they may appear to have written a broken kind of English. When they write that to you, don't think that they do not know English. They could be writing using the format of Kenya Sign Language. So try to understand what they've written to you and respond back to them in English. Swahili is not for the deaf in Kenya. The reading and writing is easy. I remember sometimes back I did not know sign language, I did not understand it. And I was moving aloud looking for somebody who could teach me. And I was referred to a certain place in a lobby. And when I got to that office, I knocked the door and I got in. That's a story for another day. And when I was in there, I could talk to them, hello. And nobody could talk to me because they were all deaf. And one of the ladies uh, took a paper and a pen and she wrote, Hello, my name is so and so. How can I help you? Oh, I discovered uh, the, the thread here is that you are writing. So I took the, the, the paper also down where she had written. I also wrote, My name is Paul. I want to learn sign language. <laughs> then the lady took the paper red and then she looked at me and nodded. Then she wrote down there, you are in the right place. Mm. You can uh, write 
and you can read and you can share that kind of information with a dead person. That sounds interesting, it's good. The other one is what we call our pantomimes. What is a pantomime? A pantomime is a, a sequence, a show of a sequence of events trying to communicate something. Not I have said, it's a sequence, an order of events. You show something without using your voice and without using the official sign language. It's like you are asked to describe what you do when you wake up in the morning. And what do you usually do when you wake up? When you wake up in the morning, it may be you. <sighs> Maybe you stretch yourself. Yawn. <laughs> Maybe you clear your face. Mm -hmm. But when you are doing this to us, you are doing it in a systematic way that you that we see that you've woken up, then you have yawned, you have uh, sat on your bed, you pray, you play, you pray, you pray, you pray, you finish, then we see you take your towel, maybe you wrap it around your waist, you walk to the shower or to the bathroom, you open the tap, we see. You're not signing, but you're kind of acting and showing us a sequence of events, and from there, we are able to see what you're trying to communicate. That's what we call a pantomime. I want to uh, carry your mind away a little bit. Imagine you are there, you are deaf, and you've been with people who are talking aloud you. It means you have not acquired speech. You cannot be able to speak. You cannot be able to communicate. So what happens? In terms of language, you don't have any language. And time has come for you to go to school. When you go to school, you don't know sign language and you do not know any other language. So in terms of languages, you are flat, you are blank, you have nothing. Then what happens? You are introduced to pantomimes. You pantomime. Teachers do so to you also. Then by and by, they keep introducing language to you, which is sign language. And finally, you acquire the official Kenya sign language along the way. Mm -hmm. The next one is body language. Body language is very interesting because even you, hearing people, you use body language. And when you talk of body language, we can talk of like the eyes, laced eyebrows, I don't know what that means. Somebody, <laughs> you meet with somebody and then they are like, what does that mean? It has a meaning. Others will do even winking. Wait, wait. What does that mean? Could be a warning or something else. That's what we are talking about body language. There is also, mm, come, mom, you know, like the little girls. Mom, come. And then they are like, what does that mean? Body language. There's also a way that body language communicates. I don't know if you are brought up like me when I was a small boy. And there is a way my mom could look at me. I'm doing something, there are visitors in the house, I'm behaving in a particular unwelcome way. And then my mom looks at me without speaking a word without any communication and I get the message very very clearly and the message is can you get out of here from the visitors can you leave the food there can you go to your bedroom can you go and sleep I hope you understand that 
What language? It's a way your boss can look at you, the way she has gotten into the office, or the way he has gotten to your room, uh, then you are like, the, the, the body is talking. Something is not very nice, not very good. Other people will be very warm, welcoming, somebody you've never met before. But the body language is welcoming, is warm. You feel to sit close to them. Mm -hmm, hello. You feel like uh, uh, chatting with them. That part of what I'm saying. Mm. It happens that body language is so, uh, so real in our daily lives, in our environments. Body language is so real. And it's also very, very real with the deaf people. You behave in a particular way and you will have communicated. And uh, the other one is natural signs and gestures. And these natural signs and gestures, these are things people do every day. People will use them like this. What does this mean? Come. That's a natural sign. Or oh, hmm. goodbye. It's a natural thing, it's a natural sign that we do like every day. We have another one, like mm -hmm. even without my face, this one is saying where we you you someone. So, when we talk of sign language, there are also some uh, natural signs and gestures that the hearing people use, but also they are common with the deaf people. And when we understand some of these things, it makes it easier for us to communicate with the deaf people and to live in harmony. I want to say something back, I have said there before about use of non-manual features. I've heard some people say, and maybe including you, that deaf people are usually very bitter. Why? Why are they behaving like they are bitter? <laughs> Maybe it's good to know that sometimes they will do something and the problem will not be them, the problem will be you. It's only that you did not understand. Maybe they were explaining something using sign language and the non-manual sign that they were using they wanted to say like there was uh, an accident somewhere. The way they do an accident, a serious one, then you may think that this person is bitter, he's even planning to, to kick you, and you want to run away from them. I want to tell you today, that's true, they also have emotions. They can get angry. But most of the times, the hearing people are not able to interpret the non-manual signs uh, shown by the deaf people, and they end up thinking that they are bitter, they are angry, they are not happy with them, and they sometimes start to withdraw. So I want to challenge you, get to know that the deaf have to use their hands, as we have said before, and use their bodies and facial expressions may be to convey a mood, a feeling. Uh, they may need to con uh, communicate through that way. And that does not mean that they are bitter. That does not mean that they are not happy or they are angry. The problem is not the death, and I will always say this, the problem is you. Go and learn some language. Even if it is the introductory level, run and you'll be able to understand the devil more easily.
I want to say something again. I'm just repeating. Do not lie to the deaf using Kiswahili. Use English. When you see they've written something like broken English, they are not in, uh, in, in that era that they are writing it longer. As per them, they could have written it correctly. The problem is you. You are the one who has a problem because you do not know sign language. If you knew sign language, you could have known that the way they have written is correct and you could have responded to them in a similar manner, correct way, KSL way. So I'm happy that you found time to be here. Sign language resource center where sign language matters. And we say, with sign language, we are all equal. Mm -hmm. Thank you for tuning in. Thank you for staying here. Thank you for watching this video. Share it with your friends. Let us encourage each other. Let us teach each other until all of us comes to an understanding that with sign language, we are equal. Mm, thank you.